fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. I pretty well fish all season long, both in fresh water and salt water for virtually every species of game fish that you can catch. And a lot of times I'll talk to fishermen when I'm traveling and I'll say, you know, what do you think the most important thing in fishing is? And they give me different answers, you know, location, structure, and I say, I think it's timing. And that goes especially if you're fishing for migratory fish like steelhead and salmon that only run up the river systems at certain times of the year, or in my case, big walleyes that are finished spawning and that are in just a certain area for a short period of time and then they disperse all over the lake. River, do you see what's on the screen? Look, that's a walleye right underneath the electric. Yeah, that's a good sign. You know what, River, I'm gonna drop straight down because that is a fish. Yeah, he just went over it. All right, River, look. It's a nice walleye. Look, River. Look at them head shake. They're known for that. Beautiful fish. OK, you know what, River? I'm going to use the net on this one. You know, it's nice to have my pups in the boat with me to keep me company. I've got one underneath the console and one at the front, keeping an eye on me. Come on, right in the net. Beautiful. You know, I really appreciate using a plastic coated net. Let's see if I can put this down here so that the fish slime stays on. I'm going to very carefully just slide my hand underneath the gill plate. See, not in the gills, just there. It's actually a very common way to land a walleye. You can see he's rolled in the net. So I've got that jig head caught in there. But look, look how well he was hooked. This guy would be considered an eater, but I'm releasing all my fish today. So look at this. He's just beautiful. What a great predator. And this guy, like the colors are just perfect. You know what, watch. Instant, instant release, come on. Perfect. Now, look at this little mess that I have here. I've got my hook caught in the net, which is okay. That's from the fish thrashing. You know, when I'm vertical jigging like this, I uh, set the hook and I keep cranking because I am in anywhere from 20 to 40 feet of water and I have to keep pressure on. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you here. This is like advanced walleye techniques for bigger fish. So I'm using a pretty long fluorocarbon leader. So I don't know if you see a little knot in my line right here. I've got green suffix 832. And then right here in front of my nose, right there is the actual connection. It's a blood knot. And then hopefully you can't see the fluorocarbon. That's that clear leader. Look, right up about four or five feet to this pretty lure. Now, isn't that a pretty pink? Walleye are part of the perch family, and one of the main differences is that they grow a lot bigger than perch. I think the Canadian record walleye is up around 24, 25 pounds, but they have very similar habits. So in the springtime, they spawn in shallower water, either close to shore or close to moving water, or where there's reefs and they have the right spawning conditions. But after spawning, the smaller walleye will stick around, but the bigger female walleyes will head to deeper water and they'll actually recuperate for about uh, five days to sometimes two weeks before they start moving off and dispersing into the lake. Oh, river, I gotta turn the electric off. River, I got a big one on. Look at gorgeous walleye. That's what we're talking about here. Advanced walleye techniques for big walleye. Postseason, big females. Hopefully that hook will stay there. <sighs> nice long fish. Now, this is a classic spawned out 
female, hasn't started eating well. I just want you to look at the stomach. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, anatomy here, okay? So it's not a big belly like a football. The jig head is perfectly located just in the upper corner. Here, is it gonna throw it? Come on. Good idea to let them thrash a little bit just so uh, you don't get hurt by their spines. You can see the way it's hooked very nicely. Don't even need pliers. And let me just hold this girl up. It's a female. That fish is probably about 25, 26 inches. And they are beautiful. Notice this one is the grayer color. It doesn't have that bold yellow colors. And it's got a flat stomach, hasn't been eating well. They're recovering in this deep water and just getting their energy back. In a week or two, they're gonna be out in the main lake and uh, they're gonna be feeding very heavily. I don't wanna keep it out too long. I'm gonna put it back in the net. Girl, you get freedom. For you, it's Sunday. Let me get that, out of, look it, look it, gone. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. Today I've actually strategically chosen to fish some deep water and to search for some big post-spawn female walleye. Now sometimes they're mixed in, you get the smaller walleye, but I'm targeting those bigger fish that are, you know, upwards of like five to 10 pounds, anywhere from about 24 to 30 inches long. To do that, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm relying very heavily on my electronics and I'm actually going from 20 to 40 feet of water on very large flats. I like to call them main lake flats and I'm trying to intercept those big females that are coming off the shallow water and that are recuperating. And I've got to fish slow, but the first thing is I got to find them. Oh, river, river, it's a big one. River, look at that rod bend. Oh, oh, nice fish. Okay, I got to let off on the drag a bit. Big head, stay on, hook lightly. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, got my drag loose. Hopefully that hook will hold. I don't know how well it's hooked. Look at the size of their heads and mouths. These big females are beautiful. Look, big head shakes trying to throw that hook. Oh my goodness. Look it, I'm gonna hold it in the water. Open my bail a little bit so I got some slack line. And what a gorgeous walleye. Wow, this one's plumper, look at this. And tip of the tail to tip of the head, 28 inches. Not exaggerating, 28 inches. That's a nice walleye. And you know what? It is plump. So let me see if I can just gently lift it up. The bottom of the upper jaw through that light tissue. I like that because the hook just comes out. These girls are gonna be swimming the open lake. You'll still catch the odd one, but not one right after the other. Here, lady. There you go. What a pretty fish. I like to get these big girls you know, back in the water really quickly. So let me just get the head out of there and okay, move the net. Look at, look at, I wanna just, I want you to see how it's gonna go, look at. That's such a beautiful sight to see him take off like that. And you know, one thing I'm excited about besides getting all these big walleye is those mats I have in the front. You see, those are called vigorous and it's a, they're made by vigorous. They're actually called spike mats. So look, we've got some under our tush. These are the actual mats. That's their logo. Here, I'm gonna turn it. It's like a dragon. But you can see on one side, they're like spikes. On the other side, they're like stubs. So if I turn it over, that's the bottom part. I really like it because even when I'm handling the fish on the front floor, the slime and the fish doesn't come in contact with the floor directly. It, there's gaps in between, but for comfort, you know, you can buy these hydraulic seats if the water's rough. I find that with the spike mats like this one and the cushions, if you have them underneath your bum when you're running, believe it or not, this little elevation, I'm gonna say of about three quarters of an inch or an inch, really makes a difference to absorb the shocks. And for walking up there, ideally, here, let me show you. Look, even up here, you know, what I've done is I've taken the mats you see River likes it too. And I've just used nylon pull ties and I've connected them together. This is where my pro seat goes and I haven't cut a hole yet. I don't use my pro seat a lot when we're doing camera work because it kind of gets in the way. But you can see the spikes here. I've got two colors. I thought I'd do a little fancy. So I've got two red ones and the rest are all black. And what I've done is I put them on the whole front casting platform. And I'm telling you, look at, even if you drop your rod, there's no problem. Nothing's gonna bang. So it's not gonna scare the fish. And also it's not gonna damage your equipment.
Locating post-spawn larger female walleyes is no easy task because you're dealing with a lot of water in depths ranging from 20 to 40 feet deep. You pretty well have to rely on your electronics to see how deep the water is and if there's any features or actually spotting fish on the bottom. You know, when I target these post-spawn females, I'm wondering if I'm getting some of the smaller males that are still mixed in with them. So I like actually that these fights are short, sweet, and uh, I can get them back in the water real quick. Isn't that brilliant? Look at those shades. See, I've got sunglasses on. Now you know why, right, my Maui gyms? Look at, he's saying, you gonna let me go? Don't eat me, please. No, I'm gonna let you go. I'll put it back in. And look, he wants to go, so I'm gonna flip the net upside down. You watch, he's gonna be gone really quick, magic gone. Now, what I want you to take notice, again, this is advanced walleye techniques and, you know, principles. This thing looks like a finesse fish. You can see it's got the same kind of tail. It hangs down, so nice wiggly action. But if I bring up an original finesse fish, look at the difference in the body width. These are identical. They're 3 8 ounce, 3 8 ounce, and these are the finesse fish jig heads. But this lure drops a lot slower because it's bulkier and it has a lot more water resistance. The finesse has a quicker drop and has more of a flickering action. They both work really well, but for the bigger fish, I would say go with the freaky fish. You'll probably get some bigger fish. These two lures, you can fish anywhere for walleye. If, you're, if they're on the bottom and you need to jig for them, they out, to me, they outproduce using real minnows or worms. They're amazing. They're made by Lunker City and they catch a lot of fish, including Lunkers. When you're vertical jigging in deeper water, it's crucial to have precise boat control, especially if you've marked targets, fish that are laying just off the bottom. So to do that, I don't use my big motor, I don't drift with the wind, I don't anchor. I actually use my motor guide, and I use it with my handheld remote, and I try to position myself so that I'm right on top of what I've marked. And then I lower my bait down, my lure combination, and I make my presentation very close to the bottom. When I'm fishing at the front of the boat, I rely on my Dragonfly, which is another Raymarine unit. It's actually the 7 Pro. And I use it both to see my location with the hydrographic chart, and I also have it on the down vision screen, the same screen that I have on my Axiom. So I actually work together with it, and sooner or later, if I'm fishing the right area, fishing close to the bottom, I usually get into bigger fish. You know, what I'm actually doing, I'm not just jigging, I'm doing something precise boat control jigging. And I'm doing that by looking at my fish finder, my dragonfly by Raymarine at the front to see what's underneath me. I've got my motor guide, XI5, and I gotta mention names here because it's really important. And look, my control, instead of being around my neck, I actually put on one of my belt loops so that it's right there. I don't have to search for it somewhere up here. A lot of times it swings around. I feel, you know, like holistic. Like I'm all one unit here. I'm part of the water, I'm part of the fish finder, part of the electric, the remote. It's just a matter of time before I connect into a fish. All right, look at, let's see how clear this water is. Look at how long this female is. I love the way I'm hooking these, not too deep. You can see that freaky fish by Lunker City right on the edge of the mouth. I mean, anybody would be happy to get these big post-spawn females. I love those big head shakes. Look at, I don't mind if she throws the hook. Come on in, you beautiful thing. And look at this, nice walleye. 28 inches, same thing, you know? So this must be a year class. But again, look at, that belly is pretty flat. This fish hasn't been feeding much. Look, if I hold it like that, you can see. The stomach is almost concave, not convex. It's actually going in, because it hasn't started feeding yet. And look at those teeth. You talk about a prime predator. Okay, as soon as I get it out of the net, let's see what the count is gonna be. If it's gonna be like three seconds. One, two, bye-bye. Perfect. Now, you know, the other thing, besides the mat that i am got here all over the floor, look at my shoes. Will you look at my shoes? These are called liguanos, and I've been bragging about them to friends. See these little bumpies? It's called barefoot technology. They're made in Germany. Look, and I'm showing off my footwear. And they are so comfortable, 
it does feel like I have nothing on, but I have shoes, very comfortable, so I can go in the water. The one nice thing that I like about them is that if you get them dirty, you just put them in the washing machine and then put them in the dryer, no problem. So, uh, you know, the older I'm getting, I'm appreciating these little comfort things. Fish are cold-blooded animals, so their metabolism is controlled by the water temperature. And I find that early in the season, like the week after opening, especially big walleye, will be very lethargic. They'll be literally laying on the bottom or moving very sluggishly along the bottom. So my jigging technique is very short, snappy jigs very close to the bottom. Nice hook set. Did you hear the real screech? Ah, come on, River, feels heavy. Look it, look at River. This one's not head shaking, maybe it's gonna start. Are you gonna head shake? No, it's just going slow. Okay, River, uh, excuse me, do you mind? I'm just gonna do this, thanks dear. What a nice pattern to fish these fish in deeper water. Um, this time of the year, it's gonna get them over here. Okay, look it. Big, beautiful female, writes itself and gone. Now, I gotta share something with you again. Advanced, advanced, not 101. This is like 1010, okay, for walleye fishing. Let me just get my jig over here. Look at this rod, this R type. Look at how the handle only starts at the reel. So, and it's a very short handle, it's got that fighting grip. When I have my hand over it, see what happens? My finger is right on the blank. So you talk about sensitivity. It's true that sometimes less is more. If you have a lot of uh, PVC material, even cork here, it drums out the sensitivity. But because this is a harder handle and very short, and the way you position your hand if you're holding your spinning rod properly, my finger is right on the blank. So I feel everything. That's why one of the reasons why I'm getting these really nice fish and missing very few of them. You know, I have a lot of respect for these bigger post-spawn female walleyes. They've been through a lot. You know, the spawning takes place over about a month and a half, even though the actual spawning happens really quickly. But they don't feed a lot when they're spawning. So the fish are usually low in energy, and because of the cold water temperatures, they're very lethargic. So when you do hook one, they don't fight very hard. Usually you can bring them right up to the surface, even in 40 feet of water, and then you'll get some head shakes on the surface. Feels heavy, feels heavy, I think it's a walleye. I love that feeling. Look, it's just starting to get into view. You can see how green that water is. Look at, coming to the top, not a ton of energy, now starting to fight. There. Boy, this is like cast, jig, look at the screen finder, hook a fish, repeat. Look at that expression, so you can let me go. I don't mind kissing you. Reverse the net. Come on, come on, get that nose out. There it goes. Amazing. You know, you can use any kind of outfits when you're vertical jigging for walleye, and sometimes I will use bait casters, but today I decided to go with a little bit lighter braid. I'm actually using 20 pound test and anticipating maybe getting fish over 10 pounds and using a lighter fluorocarbon leader. But I've gone with a seven foot spinning rod, two piece, which is very traditional, and a medium to light action spinning reel. I find that the spinning outfit is very versatile when I'm using lighter line. And I like the fact that I can actually feel the blank with my forefinger, so it's very sensitive. So on the downstroke, if I feel any resistance, I set the hook. Um, for this kind of fishing, I'm not really casting. I just find that the spinning outfit is much lighter to hold and I'm really not letting a lot of line out because I get the right distance. And because I'm positioning my boat right on top of my fish that I mark, I can literally just keep the same amount of line out. And I just jig very slowly. And then also when you hook a fish, the lighter spinning outfit is a lot of fun. I'm doing the winching and I'm looking at that fish. Beautiful, come on up. 
you gorgeous thing, you. Down the air, look it. That nice uh, bait is just hanging right out of its mouth. People love to catch these things because they're such good eating. I just love them and respect them as a game fish. But look at, look at the size of the bait fish. Isn't that a perfect size for it to go for? With the jig head, that's gotta be about six inches, five and a half, six inches long. There, and watch this. Look, it wants to go, and perfect. The type of jigging that I'm doing is very specific. I'm only snapping my rod tip once I find the bottom, about four to 12 inches off the bottom. So I'm just using my wrist. So it's more of a shaking, shaking action, right on the bottom, like this shaking, shaking. I find those big females are cruising very slowly along the bottom. They don't want to chase even to go up to hit a jigging lure. So I'm just watching my line, even though I'm using that green line, and I'm doing the short shakes, kind of snapping it down. And as soon as I feel a weight, it's a walleye. So I set the hook. Where are you? Oh yeah, nice walleye, look at, oh boy, when they come out of those depths. Beautiful, just beautiful. I was mentioning earlier about having the detection device right here. You can see the way my finger is, even when I'm fighting the fish, I can feel everything. Look at those nice big head shakes. Come on, beautiful creature. Ah, tell you what, my wrist from landing all these fish is getting quite a workout. Look at, isn't that a gorgeous walleye? See if I can just hold it for a split second. Beautiful, just beautiful fish. There, Let's get the tail out, look it. It's nice not to handle these fish a lot because they've been through a lot. We want them to spawn again, look it. Just amazing. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. And you can see that I'm using the Lunker City Finesse Fish Head, which is flat like the fish. And I think that's part of the key. So there's a really good tip for you. When this thing is falling, it doesn't fall straight. When I twitch it, that tail goes back and forth and then it glides left and right. And also look at the size of that hook. That is a nice, strong, big hook. So I like that, because you get really good hookups. Okay, Mr. Walleye, here we come. 